Off today, we had a pioneer against um, Frontier. Pioneer is 2 0 and 1, I believe, right now. And uh, Frontier is 3 0. 3 0, Frontier. 4 0. 3 or 4 0. That's that's a. Yeah. So Pioneer has a 50 50 uh, uh, win loss ratio, right? Yeah. No. So. They're they're uh, they're up in the toss right now between Frontier and uh, Pioneer because you never know that it's teams like that that might not always perform the greatest can always just come out and surprise you and really take that win away. And right now Frontier, uh, their this is their uh, last meet on their home turf. Yeah, senior night. Senior, senior night. night. Senior night. afternoon, more like it. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they did their little ceremony before the beginning of the race. Um, just kind of congratulating all the seniors that have ran with them. Even with uh, seniors that weren't necessarily there for all uh, since seventh grade, seniors that just joined their senior year, they still treat them like they're part of the family. Oh, yeah. Always celebratory. Always celebratory. Always, always a fun time being a senior. And the Frontier uh, team has quite a few seniors this year. Uh, it looks like the boys have th uh, three seniors, so they're losing some of their guys, not too much. They're still, um, still quite a young team, which is really good for them. And yeah. there uh, looks like uh, four uh, girls that are uh, seniors also, so... But again, the Frontier, with their people, they have um, a big team. So losing three to four runners will still give them high teams in numbers. Oh, yeah, for sure. Especially for the years to come when Western, when all this whole COVID thing's over, when Western Mass kicks back up, when PBIAC kicks back up. Yep. This Frontier team is going to be extremely strong in the future. Yeah, when it comes down to it, it comes down to also uh, a numbers game when it comes to running because more people you can put out there, more likely you will find one of those runners that would be really good, and that will really help you out. You've got front runners, and then you got got uh, runners that usually stay in a decent pack, which really helps the team overall when it comes to uh, getting those points. Yeah, yeah. And uh, to highlight the uh, the Pioneer team over here, they have all freshmen on their team, and uh, another another team on the come up as well. Um, they're highlighted by the two Deruders, Griffin and Noah, who are the two top dogs in that team. Looking pretty good, looking pretty strong. And, and, the, and the girls' team also is, uh, uh, says uh, says uh, they're uh, comprised of all freshmen also. So, again, like we were saying at the beginning, they're a young team. So they have a lot of years to kind of build on their running and hopefully encourage more people to come out and uh, bolster their numbers and hopefully find a couple more strong runners. Yeah. 
So right now we got uh, Pioneer and uh, Frontier on the line. They're running five and five. And the, the flag uh, flagman is out there. The flag's up. There's a whistle. <laughs> so we got about a minute, roughly, before it starts. Again, because of COVID, usually you see a big turnout of parents on both sides cheering on fans. both sides. Fans. Yeah, just yeah. fans, and that's. I think. I think a lot of the runners that are are not uh, runners that have done it over years. I bet you that's one of the biggest things they kind of miss right now is having just everyone out there yelling, just cheering everyone on. Oh yeah, it's a huge momentum boost for all the runners out there, especially at the finish. Like oh we yeah, like yep. we mentioned last time. Oh, it was just it's super anxious. Super anxious. It just gets you. Off. Your heart pumping even more. You just want to finish your strongest in front of everyone. And leave it right out there. Yeah. So the looks like we got five frontier runners and four four pioneer runners on the line. Possibly. It kind of looks like it from here. Does say Pioneer only has seven people, but I. I'm so not they're probably running. Uh, they're got splitting their guys up a bit in uh, different heats. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Getting a better chance to win, getting a different competition for those guys. Yeah, it's great. All right, so the flag's down. Guns at the ready, going up, and they're off. So this is the beginning of the first heat for uh, these teams, where they're going to run from the starting line onto uh, the Frontiers track, doing a normal lap around, and then uh, they'll do another lap around the field, the big uh, f sports field, before they leave our visual site. And if I'm not wrong, this is actually Patrick Boyden's first race of the season right here. On really? senior night, yeah. And he's... Uh, Coming out of the gates, looking pretty, pretty good. In second place, as we speak, right in front, right in behind Danny Fellows, right behind Patrick Boyden, we got Aiden Gray, Eric Brown, Alex Carey, and Luke Howard. And we got a uh, trail of three Pioneer runners right behind them. So. Again, Frontier has their two front runners, and then they have this nice uh, pack behind that uh, one Pioneer runner. But again, a lot can happen throughout the course where they shuffle up places. So that three pack of runners could actually move up into some of the slots that Frontier is holding right now. But Frontier is really holding on strong at the beginning of the race. They started out at a nice pa fast pace. We kind of see a little change up at the front of the pack. Again, you kind of have to decide where you want to use your energy, where you think it's worth it the most, because this is a long-distance run. They're th running 3.1 miles, so they really got to gauge on how much energy they want to use and where, because when you finally find your uh, nice, good uh, momentum and find a nice set um, to run, sometimes it's kind of hard to get out of that. Oh, yeah, and... Uh Especially if you find a nice, comfortable pace, and you've got that runner that kind of comes up behind you, that kind of gives you, starts giving you a push. Oh yeah, and uh, as I know, Patrick Patrick Boyden is notorious for going at the at the gate super strong, and sometimes it works for some runners, not yeah. all. Oh yeah, because coming out strong is always a good thing. But again, you gotta find that area of a good pace. A good pace within the race, and just keep it there, it's nice, steady. But some people that start out too strong, they burn out mid to late game and that's a big problem with some runners that just couldn't really gauge of how much energy they uh, are using yeah so we got the second heat on the line so it looks like the rest of the frontier boys along with three more pioneer runners so that's all of the, uh, the boys uh, pioneer runners so the flags up if they blew the whistle So is there going to be one more heat of Frontier Runners? I believe not. Guns up. And the second heat has started. 
So usually the first heat usually consists of people that are at the top for uh, their team. So they're usually at the top five because they're running five and five yeah. most of the time. Uh, so, you know, the first heat will usually consist of the stronger runners. And that's what really stands out to the coaches when they really start picking um, if, it was, if they were going to Western Masses, who stands out the most when it comes to running. And it comes to all, it's not just Frontier, a lot, and all, it goes along with all the other high schools because they, when they go to Western Mass, PVIC, or any invitational, they really want to set their runners out there with the best runners to run against the other top runners of the other schools. I'm trying to test their medal against other people's medal. And it looks like one of the pioneer runners is actually taking second place right now. Moving right up in the pack. Yeah, he's 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 uh, trying to take that first place off the bat. So it'll be a uh, it'll be an interesting race when we see uh, after they finish this loop and uh, when they come back. Oh yeah. It looks like the three man pack of uh, pioneers is kind of spreading out now though. They all look very strong right now at the gate. Look a little tired, pretty. It's a gorgeous day outside for a, for a race, too, so. Very gorgeous. Not too hot, not too cold. About 68 degrees. So in the second heat, we got uh, quite a line of frontier runners followed by the pioneer runners. And if you look, see, you see all the frontier runners, like we've talked about before, about walking the course. All the frontier runners are on the inner uh, portion of the course, while the pioneer runners are on the outer side. So that will cause them to get a l running a little further than the frontier guys. So that's yeah. why we, I always would say walking the course is a very important thing. Stay to really on the inside. Stay on the inside. Yeah. It saves a lot of energy later in the race. Even, uh, even not even running on a track, but you try to... Get your straight lines, really hug those turns. Oh, yeah. That, that can shape. Sure. That's what they're really counting when they're uh, mapping these courses out is like, all right, they're turning here, so they turn on the line. So anything outside of that, further away, you're riding, running a little bit more, but that adds up over time, especially over these courses. So we got a frontier runner way ahead of the, of the other uh, frontier runners in the second heat right now. Yep, and uh, the first heat uh, has left our visual range on to, uh, to run the rest of South Deerfield. Yeah. Are we doing drone? So we got four, we had nine Frontier runners, and the three other Pioneer runners are right behind that whole pack. So again, this is, it's November 9th, I believe. Yeah, November 9th. It's a, it's a warmer November, because usually it starts getting a little cool by now. Oh, yeah. So for some runners, like I would, for me personally, it would be a little jarring, because usually I'm used to it being colder, not this nice 68 degree weather with a nice sunshine. It would be a colder sunshine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like about one year ago, it was like 15 degrees outside around this time of year. Oh, can't believe this. It's crazy. Yeah, so, again, weather plays a lot into running, especially for those older runners that are used to certain weather conditions at a certain time. I've been out across country for five years now, I think, and... Even, like, when it comes to, like, fall time, my legs just, after running cross country for six years, and my legs just feel that urge to run when it gets to this time of the year. Because they're just, it was just, was just molded into my legs. that just like, hey, this is the weather, and this is how I usually do it. I usually go out running. So yeah. we got the second heat coming right below us right now. And actually, Amory Maxey is... Highlighted first over or first place in the second heat right now, so looking very strong. Yeah, very strong. He has a quite a bit of a lead between him and the next uh, frontier runner. He actually switched up last meet. He here he was in the uh, first heat. 
but now he uh, switched up in the second heat. I wonder, wonder why that is. And that's something uh, the coaches have uh, decided on who runs. Yeah. Um, again, the home one point of the runners you, you were saying is his first time back running, so it, that could be a possibility why he kind of got knocked down to the second heat. Doesn't mean he's, he's, he's doing bad. He still can do great uh, in the second heat, and he'll get bumped back up. Depends on how well the run, uh, runners perform. Yeah. So nothing's really decided, especially because how cross country is being run now with the different heats. You can't really just like match everyone up just perfectly to see how everyone works. Now you gotta have to weigh and determine the times for everyone, which can be sometimes a lengthy process depending on how big the meat is. <laughs> you're right. You're right. It's nothing like uh, Western Mass PVIC, which we have iterated many of times on uh, the live live streams of uh, cross country. Is that's a very big um, amount of people that they again it, it's computerized, which we are actually using here at Frontier. But again, even with uh, computers compiling it, it it's still not like you know right there and then by just watching. Yeah, a small group. Even around this time, we would have uh, we would start actually having those big meets, and it would be freezing cold. It would be <laughs> like below 30s. It would be wrapped up in a blanket until the race starts warming up, and sometimes even snow. Yep, yep. There's been times where it, it was it would be snowing for uh, Western Mass or uh, PBAC. Yeah, one of any of those races. Or you, know, you get a drenching cold rain and just turn everything to mud. Which, that is the worst. Because of how the divisions are set up, uh, usually our divi uh, Frontier Pioneers division, or they usually run middle to last races. So usually the courses, if it rained before the runs, usually are muddy. And they have to fight through that mud. So that slows them down overall. Yeah huge disadvantage for everyone really. yes yeah Dev unless you're the f unless you're the first group out there it's not as much of a disadvantage but being that late into the game it can be a disadvantage yeah for sure we are we actually have no sight of any runners right now for the boys they're at, they're all finishing the course uh, we might possibly year. have a drone going up Possibly, hopefully, to get you a dr drone video of the runners. Uh, right now, uh, if you look out onto the field, the girls t uh, cross country girls team is trying to warm up and get ready for their race. Again, it's, cross country is a lot about prepping before you go out running because you don't want to go out there just just co uh, cold legged. I would say because you. Don't want you want to warm them up. You want to get them into the motion of really hard, strenuous running. Yeah. Don't. And the biggest fear for uh, for runners is definitely pulling, tearing, any kinds of muscles, especially like hamstring. It's a big one. Mm -hmm. It's happened a lot, and it's a, that's a fear. That's a fear that some runners actually have. And warming yeah. up is, I mean, stretching really is just the greatest thing that they can do. Yeah. Stretching. Uh, also, a big uh, injury of among cross-country runners is where you're running is uh, rolling your ankle. Ooh. That that injury can always put a runner out for almost a full season, and that that that's never a good feeling. Where you you sign up, you have good runs, and you roll something, you injured yourself, and you're almost out for a full season. Again, cross-country is a very short season you do a lot of training for meets and you usually get one meet every week or so and we're pretty much at the end of the season already yeah it's very unfortunate like, like and again because of corona they don't get those invitationals yeah which also adds on to their season uh between meets where there is a gap they give them some more chances to do the sport they love exactly exactly it just stinks. I, f I definitely feel really bad for all these all these runners, especially the seniors this year, that just can't get their last, their final chance of 
the one race they wanted the yeah. vengeance on. And, yeah. Ah. Especially that, that t- not really tough, but the Stanley Park in uh, in Westfield. Yeah. That 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 is a nice a speedy course. course. Speedy course. Very if speedy course. Yeah. Yes. And uh, yeah, some of these people, some of these uh, people won't be able to run it this year, which which is which is a shame. So we got a pioneer runner in first place right now. Yeah, we just got a pioneer runner coming through the gate and going to do his final lap around the field. Actually, three quarters of a lap around the field before going on a track, doing a backwards. For his final lap, and right behind him, we got one more frontier runner. I believe that's. So that that goes uh, one, two. So. Yeah. We'll, 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 it, so it's, it's good to see Pioneer taking that first place spot because that's going to help him. But it really comes down to, like we've said before in other uh, uh, talks about cross country, is it's always great to have that number one spot. But you really need that group of runners behind you to really back you up to secure those points. So we got the Pioneer runner in one. We got Frontier runner in two, and Frontier takes three, four, and five and, and six. six. Wow. So that's a very good lineup for them. So it's going to be interesting uh, to see where the other uh, Pioneer runners. There was, only, there was only four Pioneer runners running in this first heat. And I believe this first place first place Pioneer runner is actually Noah DeRuiter, and he's looking very strong coming in for his yeah. final lap right now. Yeah, he's still moving at a good, quick pace. He's I think he's... He's, yeah, he's moving. He's going to have a good time. Right now, we're sitting at about 14.56. That's a good time That's here. A great time here. Very. And next, we got Alex Carey coming across. Right under the booth right now where we're talking. And it looks like Frontier also has a seventh place also right now on this first seat. Our second Pioneer Runners coming in uh, in the eighth slot right now. So that's their second Pioneer Runner in eighth. Wow, look at Noah DeRuiter's kicking it. Yes, he, he is still moving. He has a lot of energy left. Even though there's no one behind him, if he wants to shave a couple of extra seconds off, he'll really try to kick it in on that last 100-meter run. Let's see if Alex Carey can try to make a little bit of push here at the end for this final 300, about 300 meters he's got. Yeah, and there's about, I want to say, a little over 100 meters between the two runners. Oh, yeah. He's, I, he won't be able to catch up, but he'll be able to close that distance. Here comes DeRuiter. Yep, he's coming in. He's still pushing strong. He's sprinting in right uh, now. Yep, yep, he's, he's pushing he's it. pushing. And wow, what a time. He's going to finish at a nice 16.23. Wow. That is, a, that is a good time. Flying. I wish I had a number because I could only actually remember the course record here. It's it's really low though. I know it's about should be about the fourteen fifteen mark. I believe. I believe it's like low fourteens actually. Re- okay, see. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, again, that is that was a great time. So here comes the first cross con- uh, frontier cross country runner. So he's That's in the scary, number yeah. two slot. Coming in at around seventeen. Seventeen oh one across the line. And next, right behind him, we got Danny Fellows. He uh, came in came in first last last time he actually ran here, and senior day Alex Carey took it took it from Danny, and Danny's still pushing hard though. Oh yeah, very much so. And so we got our second pioneer runner just got onto the course, and he I believe I said he has the eighth uh, eighth place uh, slot right now. We got a nice sprint off between two frontier runners here. He's really pushing it. See, that is one hell of a kick. Oh, just barely, just barely held on to his. Luke uh, Howard, yeah, he he barely held on to Patrick right there, Patrick Boyden. A big thing I've seen, and you see clips of it where 
uh, runners or any sport uh, people just kind of celebrate right before they get to the finish line. That other person right behind them cuts right in and gets that yeah. slot. So it's always important to stay really focused until you get through that finish line and a little pass it. Yeah, hey, wow, Eric Brown run, even running an 18-14. Great time for him. Again, we're late in the season, so these guys have... Guys and gals have had a lot of time to really figure out how they want to run and really they want to pace themselves. Yeah, especially. really pace themselves. So we got the second pioneer guy coming in for the finishing 100 meters. He really kicked that. Oh, he's, he's kicking right now. Yeah, yeah. He wants it. He's going to get a pretty decent time Not too. Not bad. Under 19, 18:43. So we have the third. Uh, Pioneer runner coming around the discus uh, area, followed by a closer by a cross country uh, pl uh, frontier cross country runner, and he's actually first in the second heat right now. Huh. What, and the Pioneer runner is actually turned around, running backwards. I wonder what's going on. Maybe a bit of confusion. That's, again, like you said, the, the confusion of not walking the course. Yep. Here comes Amory Maxey. So I believe the second heat started about three minutes after the first heat? Roughly. Roughly. Uh, we'll, we'll have the times up on your screen for the first and second heat for everyone to see. So yeah, we got the uh, third pioneer runner coming up towards the gates to the um, track, followed by the fourth guy about 100 meters behind him. This team has a lot of potential in the future, though. This pioneer team. Yeah, we actually got more frontier runners of the second heat coming in right now. They're all in a pack. Yeah, they're they're strung along, but they're, there's only a couple seconds between all of them. Oh, That's yeah. it'll be be interesting to see uh, how well they lined up with the first heat. Yeah, Amory Max is really pushing it in right now for that final about a hundred meters to go. Here comes the another frontier runner coming around the discus over there, Oliver Brown. And Amory Maxey finishes about roughly 17:54. I believe the t the time yep. will be up on your screen. So. Yep, and uh, as you can tell, like we got fr some frontier runners intermittent with uh, first heat and second heat going on. So, again, yeah, uh, just having just doing the different heats, you can't really tell who's doing better right off the bat. Yeah. So we got uh, one of the third and fourth uh, pioneer runner coming in, and even like also another tough thing about this whole pandemic is the training. The training for these guys is just mm. it definitely screwed them up a little bit in a sense because it's just you can't really do much like as a group like group runs together and that was a huge thing for for like some of the other like former frontier runners is that they just always ran together like at, tr at like track workouts or around town or like pie nook down near eagle brook and it's a it's a good motivator to have do a group run because it kind of keeps everyone together and like it pushes people. Yeah, it pushes people. Especially if you have the one, one of the guys that are slightly faster runners, so they set the pace, and everyone else trying to keep keeps that going. Yeah. And so we got some more uh, second heat runners along with uh, pioneer uh, runners. We're coming around the discus, so that's a small group of them. So we'll see if uh, the pioneer guy can actually move up a, a slot again. And some of these runners have had a one hell of a kick coming in and around this track that shaved off a couple seconds easily. And here, yeah, here comes Oliver Brown. Again, an another in. strong push for that finish. Yeah, I've, I've definitely noticed a lot more 
a lot stronger finishes today than than last me here at Frontier. Yeah, definitely. Awesome to see. It's just that uh, that extra training and practices and stuff like that. So. Mm-hmm. And some of these runners are still quite young, so it's good to see how well they kind of pace themselves. But also at the same time, if they have a too big of a kick, that kind of can tell them, like, hey, I wasn't using enough to get really out there. Yeah. In front of that next guy in front of me. Yeah. So it has, it has its pros and cons of uh, having a good kick because you don't want to use too much where you don't have a kick, but you don't want to use – too little where you could have easily gotten a, uh, a slot. So we had a frontier runner pass up another frontier runner, really keeping it okay. going. Here we, go. we got Mason Smith right here, really kicking it in, seeing if he can beat his own, his own teammate. And oh, he does right there at the line. Again, you don't want to slow up, you really want to push, push it, it in, yeah. all the way in and f even through. You'll see a lot of uh, runners at the bigger meets that when they run and they're coming to the finish line you, you they run and they just keep going through the finish line they chug yeah they just they just kind of keep going for the next like 25 feet or so not super much longer but again they want to make sure they s get that slot that no one else snuck up behind them that could possibly take that that uh that uh placement away from them yeah here we go again tom albert a drastic, drastic difference within the two, the two past, or the, the past race, I should say. <laughs> Got the final Pioneer runner right here, coming up for the finish. And again, like you said, he's the outside of the track. It's going to slow you down every time. Even if you're a strong runner, running a little further distance, it can always, always add time. Yeah. And that's something that you really don't want to do. Again, this is a very much of a team sport, but also an individual sport where you want to get those good placements and get those nice low uh, times. Because a lot of times they look at the times and, like, I know runners that just like, hey, th this time wasn't that great, so I want to work on it. Yeah. And I believe that was the, the final Frontier Boys Runner finish right there. So, And the final... Pioneer runner as well. So that was a really quick, fast race for very quick for everyone. And it'll, it'll be interesting to see how well the girls, uh, Pioneer girls team, stack up to the Frontier uh, girls team. They're young; they're all freshmen, and so it it's, it, it could still be a throw up. To see who uh, scores where, because we were we were quite surprised to see how far that pioneer boys runner was, how far in front of everyone he was. He finished real strong, real good. It was about a it was a huge gap. It was a I don't like thirty second gap between the oh, pioneer yeah. guy and the, and the frontier first guy. So I I am excited to see. If we can, we if we see something like that from the Pioneer girls to do that also. Again, all these all the Pioneer runners are uh, freshmen, so they got a they those some of those runners have really great careers ahead of them that will send them really up into Western Mass and even maybe states. That's what like a lot of uh, people keep their eyes out for is like great runners like that because. Cross country is still a sport, so you can still get scholarships for being a runner. Oh yeah, but in, um, it's a little different in college though, where um, the boys actually start running um, even a further distance. I think it was five miles. Rough. But, yeah, in college. Yeah. yeah, the girls will stay at three point one, so it'll be a. Uh, it's a it's a difference, but again, coaches that are out there will look for those strong runners. For sure. For the uh, the girls seem to they're not lined up yet, but pretty sure yeah. And here comes the the flag for the girls right now. 
Mm -hmm. So it looks like we actually have a couple more boys coming in. Uh, front, a frontier runner, uh, a pioneer runner. Uh, two pioneer runners. Yeah, two pioneer runners. Yeah. One more frontier. So again, this is actually a much faster race uh, that we saw. Probably a faster race for Pioneer also than you would have seen at the beginning. Oh yeah, for sure. And this last last little stretch right here by the, like this last straightaway going out of the track is just gotta go. You just gotta go, so. What determines your uh, whole race right there at the time? So, and the whistle is just blue for the girls. Yeah. So, boys' uh, college is five mile run. Yeah. All right. So the guns set, going up, and it begins. So the first heat of the. Uh, Cross Country Girls has started. We have seven Frontier Girl Runners and we have four Pioneer Girl Runners in that first heat. Yeah, so they're still shuffling around right there at the beginning. Highlighted by uh, Angelina England. Right in there, right there in the uh, front of the pack. Start. So again, we see we're, we're seeing that uh, frontier pioneer frontier with another pioneer behind that. So it'll be interesting when they leave. Uh, it's still early, but when they leave our view distance, where they really end up before they get out of our, our view. So yeah, no, the, the pioneer girls are really mixed in there with the frontier girls runners. So. Again, this is going to be a really interesting race. Let's see if they can stick together the whole way. Yeah. Again, it, you won't want that first place spot or second place spot, but again, it's the group that comes up behind you to secure those other slots will really help you. You just got to know how to make that, that certain move in the race and just speed up and catch everyone. Yeah. Buy them. Got. Again, you can't really tell in the pack because you got a you got a pioneer runner right there in front of the bigger pack of girl uh, frontier girls. So that's a nice placement for her. And it will be interesting to see where the uh, back two uh, pioneer girls end up in between all the frontier runners. So we have uh, two pioneer and one frontier boys runner coming and finishing their race. Frontier runner looks like he's kind of kicking it, kicking it in, uh, really trying to push himself to that finish line. Yeah. Here comes a pioneer runner. A oh, little, little mix-up right there, and whether to go front or left or right of the the cones right there. And wow, here it is. He's sprinting in for that finish, and good finish for him. Again, the, like I've said many times, the Pioneer boys and girls team is a very young team, so they still got time to really grow into their running uh, careers. Sure. Sam Kai just finished his race right there. So the girls' second heat is on the line. They're cheering on their fellow runners. There's the whistle. So it's the rest of the girls for Frontier and three Pioneer girls runners. The gun's set. It's up. And they're off. So there's the second heat taken off already. Got a lot of Frontier girl runners in Yet there. Yeah, again, Frontier in the last couple, last five years, they have really been getting a lot of numbers out there for runners. There are a couple uh, girl runners I know that usually wouldn't be doing this sport. They would be doing volleyball. So 
it's quite interesting to see people doing other sports now because because of Corona that how the how the seasons are a little mixed up now. So they get to try something a little different. Yeah. Wow, the girls on the second heat are really, really pushing it. That's that's a very strong, aggressive, very aggressive start for oh, them. Yeah. They're flying at the start. Wow. Yeah, at least the frontier runners, and then you got a nice host of uh, frontier girls intermingled with some pioneer girls at the end. And for this uh, first heat for the uh, for the girls. Pioneer runner just took and took uh, the first place spot yeah. around the discus area. Let's see how close this race is going to be. I mean, it, it's going to be exciting to see. see but, oh, man, I wish. <laughs> kind of wish I was back running again. It's exciting. Oh yeah, very much so. so we just have a huge pack of about. Six girls right there, one five frontier and one pi uh, pioneer runner right there. So having a group like that right now, early in the game, is good. But it'll be it'll be interesting to see w how well they spread out and see if that pioneer runner uh, can get out in front of them and really get that uh, that other uh, spot in the low numbers. Again, fr cross country is about getting the lowest score possible. And 15 is the best uh, score you can possibly get. So right now, leaving the parking lot, we got a Frontier girl that got her first place spot back. F tight Pioneer runner right behind him, really chopping out the heels. And it keeps, looks like they keep swapping up because they just changed again going out into the parking lot. So again, I'm going to be quite interested to see what happens when they get back here into our view distance, at least for us, the commentators. It's going to be interesting. Very much so, because we don't actually have a live feed of the drone, so could be I'm going to be excited to see what happens. Oh, yeah. Could be neck and neck. Could be, uh, I don't know, like a 100-meter separation. I don't know. I, again, it'll be interesting. So the second heat's coming on to the field to do the first lap around. We got a Pioneer runner taking the number four spot. And she's slowly, uh, slowly pulling away to really secure that slot for herself. Oh, and here's a pioneer runner in the back of the pack right there, just kind of sped up a little. And it looks like she's going to try to take a couple more spots. Again, it's still early in the race, so maybe she'll move up, maybe she'll move back. Again, you, it's really down to the runner and their, their abilities that they know what they can do. Yeah. Because, again, like I've said, when you're new to the sport you're, and they're in only a freshman, so they still got time to really figure out what really works for them. Some people prefer taking a lot of spots early on and trying to hold that one position while others like to slowly work their way through. Yeah. Looks so like we have one final Frontier Girl runner coming off the track right now. Yeah, she's been uh, with the Frontier Girls since the beginning of the season. Uh, I always admire those people that really stick with the, the sport. And I know the girls' team and the boys' team are very supportive of all their runners. Oh, yeah, always, always. And uh, it seemed like past couple years it's been like a little iffy between like the boys and the, and the girls' Frontier team. Like They haven't really like bonded well, but last year... It just like snapped and we were all bonding pretty well, so which is great. Oh yeah, a lot of bonding usually goes in between just girls and girls, boys and boys. Because yeah, we're part of one big group, but also at the same time, it's just it's high school. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> but again, like at every race, I know the frontier girls and boys always cheer on any runner that is really f trying to finish it. And being just supportive. That's what I really liked about f running cross country personally is just the camaraderie of everyone just kind of cheering everyone on. Even the parents, the spectators, they all cheer on everyone. 
and really kind of hope for the best for them to do well. So that pioneer runner in uh, fourth place on the second heat, she's moved up and really secured that number four spot. And I think she's going to take a couple more spots before we get to see her again. So she's doing really well. Oh, yeah. And it looks like this pioneer girl that was moved up a couple spots, moved up one more, like another spot. Oh, yeah. They're... they're so they're kind of working together because I, I think, I possibly think, that they're kind of using each other as uh, a pacemaker. Push but themselves. also yeah. trying to push themselves to keep moving up. That's a great strategy to do. Yes, very much so. Always pick someone that you know you can keep pace with, especially in your own team. And really use them to kind of help you stay focused and also... Overall, help you move up and hopefully take some more uh, spots. That's it'll be interesting to see where those uh, pioneer girls end up because right now you can see they're kind of they had a little gap. Now they're close again. It looks like one of them are going to be moving up, maybe. So it'll be interesting how they play on each other. Yeah. Because some runners like doing that, where they just click with someone and then they just kind of play off of each other. Yeah. So, this whole second heat is about to go into the center of town, around town. They're going to, you'll see the drone footage, I believe, on your screen. And so, I want to thank uh, FK for giving us the opportunity to live stream that, uh, oh, yeah. this, this sport to those who really want to watch it and really support it, and especially uh, those uh, guys that are... Uh, operating the drone to really it this sport's a very active spectator sport <laughs> you <gotta laughs> say the least you gotta always be moving i know some uh, parents that would just run from one side of the course to see their kid to the other side of the course and then back to the finish line i admire those those parents that are just so into the sport like their kid is and Want to see them everywhere. Yeah. It's awesome to see. It's awesome to see. So we got about 11 minutes and 15 seconds on the clock right now. For the first heat that took off. So hopefully we'll be starting to see them in the next couple minutes. Probably about the next four or so, four or five minutes. Yeah. So... Again, it's a nice day out. It's not too hot. It's not too cold for these runners. A little different than what the senior runners are used to. But yeah, again, uh, what we saw going out right now onto the parking lot out of our visual lanes range, it's going to be a very interesting race. Which I'm again, I'm very excited to see how it turns out. Yeah. Those neck and neck races are always, Only always nail biting. Nail, nail biting. biting, very much so. And uh, again, it's amazing on how some of these people really push themselves to really get in that position ahead of those runners and really hold on to that spot. Yeah. But again, it's a, a uh, individual sport, but it's also a team sport. When my brother was uh, running. We, we were in a different division, so we were running against uh, Amherst, Amherst High School. Their runners are a whole different level. They were very, very strong runners. Oh, yeah. But my, uh, Caleb, he was an even stronger runner, so he was able to beat the whole other team and got that number one spot. That's impressive. Yeah, because... <laughs> Amherst is, is very well known for their runners, and a lot of those uh, uh, Hampshire uh, Hampshire uh, County towns, well, uh, high schools, are really have really strong runners. And here comes the uh, the front, the final frontier girl runner in the second heat, coming around the bend to on her way to the center of Deerfield to finish her race. So she, she, she is trying, and that's 
I can I always will respect someone that comes out for a sport and really try to try try to finish and do the best as they can cuz again this sport is not necessary for everyone's cup of tea. Oh yeah. But th- you always get those runners that are just they want to do it and they will put the work in and that is respectable. Very very respectable. And again, it's it's a it's a sport that you can work on and and improve yourself overall. Exactly, you can never bash them for trying it. Yeah, no, they're doing something that you really just can't really take away from them. It takes a lot of grit and grind. That's what I got. <laughs> again, a lot of these runners, a lot of their time is spent training. So you're training four days a week and maybe have one meet uh, a week. Not necessarily all the time because of weather or something else. Yeah, but yeah. They spend a lot of time working at it. and the time, oh. the time that you're willing to put in is what you get out of it. Here comes the the first place Pioneer Girl right here. She is She is still moving. She's moving strong, and there looks like there there's is going no, to be one big lead. There's no sight. Oh, there she is. All right, so there's roughly one. You want to say 100? 200. 200 meters yeah, between? Probably. So that's that's an impressive more. lead. You can, Her white shoes are quite distinguishable. Yeah. So you can really see how really quickly she's moving. Frontier runner, she's really trying to push and really try to catch up because there's still a lot of a lot of distance to make it to the finish line. So, but again, this this is what is amazing because you have these two runners neck and neck from the beginning all the way out into the parking lot where we couldn't see them anymore. We don't have the drone footage, sadly, up here. But again, they they broke away, and now it's going to come down to who can keep their their pace up, pace up while the other one tries to play, play catch up. Yeah, and this Pioneer Girl is looking very quick right now. Very quick. Sahana Human, I believe. Heilman? Oh, and here comes the rest of the Frontier Girls Runners right into the gate around the field right now. We got four, four Frontier Girl Runners coming on. So Angelina Englund is still pushing, pushing along. Sahana Hellman, first place right now for Pioneer. She's looking very strong for this finish. Oh yeah, she last, she is she's meters. doing great. Yeah. Right now the time is sitting at um, uh, 16:56, so that she's doing really well. She's wow. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, Frontier Girl catches uh, a little more of her uh, coattails. Again, we got a. Uh, uh, Another five run of uh, six runners of Frontier coming in around the discus, and th- and that group is followed by two more of the Pioneer runners, followed by another Frontier runner. So we'll see if the Pioneer runners catch up or swap places with each with each other. Pioneer Girls Runner coming in on the final stretch. Yep. Here comes this Sahana Human right here. Coming in and finishing. She's lost 100 meters. She's looking great. She looks like she could do a little more. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she has a great pace, and that's an 1808, she- roughly. So that's that was a really good finish for her. She didn't even look like she was out of breath. <laughs> Definitely looked like she could have kept going. So here comes the first Frontier runner. So she's in second place for the first heat. 
And she's really trying to get it in there. She looks a little more tired than the Pioneer runner. And she'll finish about an 18.38. About 30 seconds behind her. So yeah, you, so yeah, you were roughly right about the 30-second yeah. difference. So that's that's a good job. So so we got that uh, group of five uh, fr uh, frontier girls on the track. We got another pioneer girl about to enter the track right now. Yep. And another one right behind her. Follow uh, closely followed by another frontier runner. So. We'll see who switches us up and uh, gets into those spots. We got another pioneer runner coming around the discus. Okay, so here we got Abigail Howard coming along the along the bend for the final hundred meters right now. Right behind her, Lucia Dulet and Leah Gump. And a pack Ooh, really. She's speeding up. She's going to try to snag a spot to... off. She's pushing. She's, she's pushing. pushing. Oh, it's closing. Oh. It's closing. Oh, and she got the. Oh, that. That was close. That, the cameras are going to have to decide that Photo one. Finish right there. So the thing that I saw between those two runners. Oh, is, here we got another one. Yep. That oh, that was wow. a strong finish. She I she got that spot. Two of them. So the note, one thing I noticed between the last sprint off was one of them was trying to do uh, have a nice long stride while the other one was doing a shorter, quicker, more of a sprint yeah. stride. So again, running it really comes down to the person and themselves. Like I always knew I was a long, um, uh, take longer steps while so in some cases it works better, but in like 400 meters runs, not as much as the quick sprint uh, steps. Yeah, yeah. And we got another good sprint off going. Pioneer girl keeping her spot while the other one's really working that, trying to catch that frontier one that passed in front of her. And it's hard to tell. Wow. It's hard. Wow, a lot of There's a lo lot of good finishes, three, a lot of nail biting finishes. Three really close finishes in this girls' race. So we got four more run uh, girl runners coming, passing dugouts. Three frontier girls, one uh, pioneer girl. Yep. So again, they're close together. So yeah, I believe this is the second heat, right? I believe so. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see who passes who. When it comes to down to the final moments of this race, again, uh, the times for the first and second heat will be up on your screen so for you uh, people that are watching. Final pioneer, I believe, pro final pioneer runner in the first, first heat. heat. Just coming around the bend for their for final uh, hundred meter sprint right here. Trying to shave a little time off, a couple seconds off her time. And there, uh, she finishes it around a 22.10. Not too bad. So we got that group of four girl runners running right below the booth. Again, they're pretty close to each other, so it'll be interesting to see the how the finish comes. Yeah, I mean, it's... Definitely within uh, striking distance for that pioneer girl right there. With oh yeah, two, two he, frontier uh, runners. So. Yeah, especially uh, and frontier runners. So the two front runners for that pack. It will it'll be interesting to see who really wants that spot. Yeah. So we just got another uh, group of three girls behind the dog out. Four girls, my bad. Uh, three frontier and one pioneer runner. Again, we're seeing a lot of these small groups coming in where. Very in distance of each other where when it comes to down to the final moments of this race that no one spot is really secure. Exactly. Again, we've seen for the girls race quite a bit of change up right at the last second. So and a couple looked like a couple tie, uh, ties. It's always awesome to see those photo finishes. And we got a pioneer and a frontier runner just came through the gate and heading towards the back of the dugout. 
again, all all these runners right now, how close they are, are really close to each other to the point where they can pass. And yeah, there's there's one of them. One yeah, of the pioneer. Yeah. The Pioneer Girl Runner has just passed one of the Frontier Girl Runners. And nipping on the heels of the next. So it'll be interesting on seeing the sprint off. Oh, she, 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 kicked, she kicked it in early. Making her move right now. The question is, the front, does, does the Frontier Girl Runner have enough in her to try to catch it? I'm going to say kind of no on this. Yeah. She's trying. She she looks like she's trying, but that, fr uh, that pioneer runner, she's, she's looking very strong right now. Very strong. Yeah. Very strong. All these girls uh, that are coming in are really pushing it. Yeah. So three frontier girl runners within four seconds of each other, right there. Four, all right, six, seven. Right here again, we got another two two frontier, one pioneer, one frontier. So the pioneer girl runner could could she uh, nip at the heels of the frontier runners again? I I, I don't know. It'll be interesting. Let's see. Well, that last sprint off we saw, that pioneer girl runner took those two spots and really cemented herself into that position. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see who has enough left to really get it in. For sure. So we have two more Frontier Girl Runners coming around the dugout right now. And we have a Pioneer and two Frontier Runners right below us in the booth. So the four girls on the track on the far side from us, looks like they're keeping equal distance between each other. Yeah, I haven't, no really, no really sudden movements, no really sudden changes in the placement, but. Run out of sunlight. We got one Frontier Girl runner really trying to catch up to the front runners of this group. She looks like she's kicked it in early and really starting to move. Yeah. Well, all right. So we got a, we got this one we frontier girl trying to sprint it in. I don't think she's going to be able to catch the girl in front of her. But hey, that is a good kick to really finish off this race. And a great way to shave off time. We got a frontier runner coming up to the pioneer runner. Again, oh. some of these runners are just really tired at that. Uh, so. I noticed how the Pioneer Runner, she saw the Frontier Runner come up and start, and then she kicked it in, but the Frontier Runner kind of slowed down after she just passed her a little. That's the thing, when it comes to these end sprints, is really carry your momentum, all you got, across the finish line. Yeah, that's, don't slow up, that's, that's really what it gets. Especially right after there. you pass someone, when you pass someone, you want to really pass it like you mean it. Yeah. And especially in uh, the harder, longer races that involve a lot of uh, hills and stuff like that, that could be really demoralizing. Like, yeah. God, this guy, j guy or gal just passed me, and it's just like, ugh. So. We got another well, Frontier runner right by the dugout right now. They're making their way in. We got a Pioneer Frontier small uh, two coming in. We'll see if any of them really try to pick off a spot or just hold on to what they got. And it looks like they're just going to stay where they are. For me personally, I, when it comes to racing, I always try to kick it in, always try to shave off a couple extra seconds. Yeah. But again, it's about pacing. It depends on how much you got left of energy to really spend on that real hard sprint at the end. Yeah, it's it's not for everyone. It's tough to gauge throughout the race if you have that much left or, or not. You got you got to dump the tank. That's what yeah. you got to do. Yep. And a great finish from a frontier runner right here. Oh yeah. There's nice there, there's there. times where, especially in the bigger races, PVIC and Western Mass, like we've said many a times, where these runners they give it their all oh, to yeah. the point where. 
they can't even stand it anymore. They just dumped it all out, and they uh, and we got people that volunteer to take their take their tag and hold their spot for them. But sometimes they just leave it out to the point where they're just down and out. Yeah, and you just gotta admire the dedication of these runners that go out there and run these races. And just leave it all out there. Right now, you can actually see the girls' uh, cross country team. They're cheering on everyone that comes uh, towards the finish line. They're really cheering them on on their uh, final uh, run of this course for this season. Some of these runners, it's their last run, period. So sad. Again, it. it it, it, it's a great time, and sometimes it's just sad to see it end. Yeah, it hurts. It hurts. I know uh, when the corona wasn't here, we would uh, have a, quite a, a celebration afterwards, have cake, and just just talk about uh, past races or people's reminisce, reminisce and people's goofs, goof ups. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So there's a very strong finish by Frontier Girl right now, right there. We got one more Frontier Girl coming on, coming on the track right now. About 300, uh, 250, 200 meters left. The sun has actually gone down right behind the mountain right there. It's always a nice sight to see from here, from Frontiers, the nice uh, sun setting behind uh, the mountains. Oh, gorgeous. Nice. No, it's always a nice uh, sunset here in the Pioneer Valley. Definitely cooled out a bit too. Oh yeah, no, you, you you can feel the temperature drop after that sun went behind the mountain. It's not like extreme drop, but it's a little cooler. Not too bad. Not too bad. It's probably a relief for some of the runners too that are quite hot after this hard, taxing run. So we got a Frontier girl coming. Having her last hundred meters. And she's still moving out a good clip, so she she's doing great. And and you hear all the all the girls on the frontier team just roaring for her to finish and it's great to see. Oh yeah, very much so. I'm impressed for the frontier community of runners of uh, when I started there was a handful of us there's maybe 10 or so now the girls and the boys they're 20 strong awesome that that is, and the turnout for in person before corona for people supporting their child or just the sport in general was just massive compared to when I started and I'm always glad to see like people, the 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 group expanding and more people running, because it, yes, it's a sport of running, but there's a lot to it. It's a lo you gotta have a lot of grit to run 3.1 miles. Yeah, and especially those ones that really want to compete, really get up there, do Western Mass, maybe even go to states. That's 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 some hard stuff right there. Yeah, it takes a it takes a lot out of you too, though. A lot. Well, you're constantly uh, using your body throughout this race. Legs, arms. Just trying to stay focused. Again, it, it, it can take a lot out of you. And you just got to keep going. Yeah. So I believe we're waiting on a couple more. A couple more runners. Runners, yeah. Again, even these last couple of runners coming in, they're still going to get a huge support from the team. If they're Pioneer or Frontier, they'll really cheer them on, really support them finishing. But again, a lot of, so for some, again, for uh, eight Frontier runners, Roughly is going to be their last race here at Frontier Regional, and I know for, to me that meant a lot to me. It probably meant a lot to oh, you yeah. when you were running. It's like this: the, you ran this course for training, you ran it for meets. So, 
sad. <laughs> but it's always great coming back, watching the younger generation. I know it's been five years for me, so a lot of these runners I actually don't know. And a lot of the runners that I did know graduated a year or two years ago now. Yeah. And so it's always good to see the it just kind of passes on like you you'll hear something that just like oh, i know where that original that originally came from or like the nickname the jokes <laughs> again it's just like again even know that me or you or one of the other former runners aren't there you, there's always like just little silent whispers of just stories and that, that, I think, means a lot to some of us former runners. Yeah. Even the coaches. The coaches here at Frontier are great. Uh, Mr. Flynn, which is the boys' cross-country coach, he is a great guy. He always recognizes his, some of his older runners. Even runners that haven't been here for almost 10 years. 10 Crazy. years plus. And if, you, if they walk off and say, hi, Mr. Flynn, he knows exactly who you are. And uh, then we got Bob Smith, the girls coach. Yep, I know Bob Smith. Uh, he... Former English teacher at Frontier Regional. Same with uh, Walt Flynn, too. Both former teachers. And right. they really enjoyed seeing their students also be runners, also. Yeah. And they... they I, I think that's why the, even after uh, they retired from Frontier as a teacher, they still want to do the sport like really pass it on to the next uh generation of runners uh one of the assistants coaches is actually a former cross-country runner and captain uh uh andrew futter i used to, i ran with him when i first started and he's a great guy he knew his stuff he knows his stuff and it's great to see someone from the past come here to frontier and really Give uh, good advice. To good advice to the the younger yeah. runners, and really hopefully keep keep it going. I hear a lot from uh, parents that have runners how like how much their kids enjoy it because just the camaraderie uh, and how well the the coaches are to everyone. The coach you uh, coaches are usually try to uh, here in Frontier for the cross country team. Usually try to learn your name. Yeah. And usually tries to talk to you a bit. Up oh, here comes uh the Frontier Girls runner coming into the gate. Yeah, Katie! And so she's finishing up her race and again it it's a hard sport, it's not for everyone, but she is willing to put in the time and really trying to finish it. And that that is commendable. Yep. As we see her finish right here. Pretty sure that she's a is she the final runner? I believe so. I believe so yeah. Again, for some of these runners, just finishing is a big accomplishment, and it, it means a lot to them. So, I. Seeing her finish is always a good thing to see any runner because the last thing that runners really want to do is have an accident or something happens to them and they just couldn't finish. Yeah. Don't, you never want to see that. Never yeah. want to see that. As much as you want to win, you never want to see even a, another team runner get injured. Because at one point or another, most of the time someone has an injury if it's during a race or during a training and they just couldn't do that season, it, it's kind of a downer. Yeah. Just a, it just makes you feel bad. and Yeah. You can't finish the season like that, like the, like the season you wanted. And I know I was injured. I got an injury of an ankle injury my, eight, I think it was eighth grade. I was actually doing a pretty decent season that so far up to that point. I never really recovered from that. I still made it into the top seven, but I, I think I missed out on my best year Yeah. of uh, running cross country. 
That was at a that could have been a drastic improvement year too. Yeah. Still, still growing, and the the muscles are just yeah don't keep up. So, so yeah, we're we're hearing quite a bit, of, a lot of support from the um, from the audience here at Frontier. Uh, people cheering them on. The girls team is joining in on the cheering of her uh, finish, and she's really trying to finish, and that's that's respectable. Great to see. And anytime you go to a meet, and uh, even if you're the last runner, you can always feel proud that you finish, and everyone's there to cheer you on to finish. Yeah. I I know a couple of runners that were weren't the greatest runners, but that they're. What they said is like being cheered on to finish meant the the world to them, especially after such a hard, tedious run. Yeah, it's awesome. So here she comes. And the teammate support is just great from this from Frontier Girls team right here. And oh yeah, very much so. And even you got some of the Pioneer Girl runners right there just cheering her on. So here she comes on to. Uh, the track coming through the gate onto the track and again this sport it, it's com very competitive but also everyone has is very sportsmanship yeah. is a very big thing of this even if they're not on your team cheer them on give them a little pep so you got about four uh, 350 left of yeah. the uh, race, and she's just she just keeps going. So that that is always great to see. And uh, the girls' team, none of them left. They all s stick around for all their runners. And we even, like you said, we saw some pioneer girls uh, on the outside cheering her on to finish. Yeah, and you see that almost anywhere, not just here at Frontier. You see that. Uh, almost everywhere you go when it comes to school versus school. Maybe not on the bigger races where there's hundreds of people, but these small town uh, races between local high schools, they, they, uh, they bring a lot of meaning to this sport. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so here she comes on her final, final couple hundred meters and about 200 meters or so left. Yeah, see if she can finish strong here. Definitely gotten a lot cooler outside on this fine evening. It's fine evening out here in Western Mass. Gorgeous. Look at that view. So that's 150 meters left. So here comes the final 100 meters. And here she comes. She's kicking it. She gave it a good kick to really try to push it in and finish. That's awesome. That's always awesome. You just see someone really try to kick it in and uh, finish strong. And there you go. Great. Last runner in. Great conclusion of the night. Very much so. See everyone out here cheering for the last runner. It's uh, great support. Great support. support. Yeah. And uh, here at Frontier, we saw a great race today. Very nail-biting race when it comes down to um, Pioneer and Frontier. There was a lot of 
switching back and forth. You saw a lot of good runners out in front, and as we saw for Frontier uh, boys and girls, uh, they slipped back to the second spot while the Pioneer runners really got there out there in front. Yeah, and despite both of the uh, the Pioneer girls and boys runners winning, I'm the Frontier pulled it out both uh, both girls and boys races. So yeah, again, it, even. Again, uh, sport is a very individual, but team, but also a team sport. Yeah. So, that's great for them to get that number one. It's just you really need to find that good group of runners to really back up that number one spot runner. Oh yeah. Really, yeah. again, uh, having that number one spot's great, but you really got to secure those other spots. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you for uh, coming in and watching live from FCAT here at Frontier Regional High School. And uh, hope you guys have a great night.